let's do a full example where we need to find the rational zeros and all the actual zeros. Okay. So we're going to start off the same way. To find the possible rational zeros, remember that's plus or minus our values of p over q. Here, p is going to be our factors of our constant, which is 24. And again, I am going to use the rainbow method. So I'm going to have 1 and 24. Next number up from 1 is 2. 24 divided by 2 is 12. Next number up from 2 is 3. 24 divided by 3 gets me 8. Next number up from 3 is 4. 24 divided by 4 gets me 6. Next number up from 4 is 5. 24 is not divisible by 5. And I know I'm done with my factor rainbow because the next number up from 5 is 6, which is already on my list. Now let's look at q. Remember, q is the factors of our leading coefficient, which in this case is 2. We're going to have 1 and 2. So our possible rational zeros, remember, are in the form plus or minus p over q. I'm going to write mine in the plus or minus with the brackets. Remember, I'm going to take all the factors of 24 and divide by 1, starting first. So 1 divided by 1 gets me 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 3 divided by 1 is 3. And I'm dividing each one of these by 1, which gives me all the values of p, all the whole numbers, because I divide it by 1. The fractions come when I start dividing by the other factors of q, the other values. So 1 gets me all the nice whole numbers from the list of p. Now dividing by 2. 1 divided by 2, that's new. Got to include it. 2 divided by 2 is 1, already on the list. 3 divided by 2, convert that 1.5 back to a fraction. That's new, needs to go on the list. 4 divided by 2 is 2, already on the list. 6 divided by 2 is 3, already on the list. 8 divided by 2 is 4, already on the list. 12 divided by 2 is 6, already on the list. 24 divided by 2 is 12, already on the list. So we are done. We have found all possible rational zeros in this list here. Remember, with the plus or minus, we have the positive and negative of each one of those values. All right, part B says using synthetic division, we need to find one zero of f of x. A bunch of the videos are going to show you that you need to randomly choose one of these numbers out of our p over q, our possible rational zeros, and do the synthetic division to try to find a zero. I don't want you to do that. Instead, what you're going to do is you're going to go to a graphing website. Okay. And the one that I'm using is desmos.com slash graphing okay. and you're going to enter our polynomial so we can graph it and if you notice we're going to look where we have x-intercepts remember x-intercepts are zeros our roots our solutions okay says that we have one at 2, 0. We have one at 1 1.5, comma, 0. So this tells us our first number, well, two numbers, to plug in to our synthetic division. 
You can use either one you want, but you're gonna start with one of them, okay? So again, I graphed my functions and I'm looking for x-intercepts where we cross the x-axis. So I'm gonna go back to my notes. I'm gonna make a little note to myself that we found x equal to two and x equal to 1.5, that way I don't forget it. And we're gonna set up the synthetic division. I know that all of you want to avoid the 1.5 because it's a fraction. So let's set up the x equal to two in the loser corner. We don't need to change the sign because it's already x equal to two. It's not the factor, it's actually the value. Setting it up, we're gonna have two, negative seven, 14, negative 28, and 24. Give yourself some space. Remember, first one always goes to the dog. First one always goes to the floor. And then we begin our multiplication. Two times two is four. Add vertically, we get negative three. Two times negative three gets us negative six. Add vertically, we get eight. Two times eight gets us positive 16. Add vertically, and we get negative 12. 2 times negative 12 gets us negative 24. When we add vertically, we get 0. We just found that x equal to 2 is a 0. We also found that x minus 2 is a factor. Because remember, we would move the two over to the other side by subtracting, which is why we have x minus two as a factor. We're going to need to go on and continue to find the rest of the zeros. And since we had degree four, we will have four zeros. We found the first. You're not gonna go back to the original. We had you practice the remainder theorem for a reason. Remember, we started out with an x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, then number. And then underneath, because we were dividing by an x equal to two, everybody's degree drops down by one. And we have a remainder of zero. Our remainder polynomial for this part is 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 8x minus 12. We're gonna use that in our next part where it says find all other zeros of f of x. When we were graphing, we found that x equal to 1.5 was also an x-intercept. Convert that back to a fraction, we get x equal to 3 halves. So let's use 3 halves in our next synthetic division. We would have 2, negative 3, 8, negative 12, First one always goes to the floor, carry the two down. Three halves times two gets us three. Add vertically, we get zero. Three halves times zero is zero. Add vertically, we get eight. Three halves times eight gets us 12. Add vertically, we get zero. We just found out that x equal to 3 halves 
is a zero. And then let's talk about his factor real quick. If I have x equal to three halves, I would multiply both sides by two. which would get me 2x equal to 3. Move it back over. 2x minus 3. Sorry, skip step. 2x minus 3 equal to 0, which means that 2x minus 3 is a factor. That's going to come back up. That's why I'm making us do it now. But we just found that x equal to 3 halves is a 0. 2x minus 3 is a factor. We had our remainder polynomial, which we were using. We just divided by the x equal to 3 halves, which means we're dropping down to an x squared, an x, and a number. which means our new remainder polynomial is 2x squared plus 0x plus 8. Set it equal to 0, and you can use the quadratic formula. You could try to factor. This one won't. Or here we can use the square root property because our middle term is 0. Because the middle term is zero, we can use the square root property. If it was not zero, you would not be able to do so. Square root property is where I'm headed. So I'm gonna drop my x squared. So two x squared, sorry, I'm dropping my middle term. So I'm only left with my two x squared plus eight equal to zero. Move the eight over by subtraction. Divide both sides by 2. We get x squared is equal to negative 4. Square root property both sides, remembering your plus or minus. On the left-hand side, the x squared and the square root cancel each other out. We have the plus or minus because the negative under the radical take out an i. So we have x is equal to plus or minus 2i. Break that up. That means that we have, sorry, give me just a second here. That means that we have x equal to 2i is a zero and x equal to negative 2i is a zero. So these guys are both zeros. And we want the factored form of f of x. This is why I kept writing everybody's factors. For x equal to 2i, his factor is x minus 2i. And for x equal to negative 2i, we would have x plus 2i. For our factors, this is the conjugate roots theorem. We had one positive, we had one negative. So here we go. For our factors, if we're putting them in order, I'm going to scroll up just a little bit here. Notice that we had x minus 2 is a factor. We had 2x minus 3 is a factor. And then we had our two imaginaries. So we said x minus 2 is a factor. 2x minus 3 is a factor, along with x minus 2i and x plus 2i. 
You don't need to do any multiplication. You don't need to do any other simplification because they wanted it in factored form. So you're finally done with this problem. And notice that we did find the four intercepts. Two of them were imaginary and the other two did fall in our rational zeros list.